Okay, this is Yikes Dude 754, and now we're about to wrap up the first episode. This is the last map of the first episode, the Abyss. So, so we do get that Battle Lord guy. He's a little bit different on PlayStation. He's a little bit more uglier on PlayStation. And his behavior is somewhat questionable, I would say, from a technical standpoint. But, you know, what are you gonna do? Thanks. <laughs> I was just intentionally waiting for him to jump down. But yeah, the Abyss is um, a little bit of a more fun map, I think. Because it's, uh, it's a fairly unusual map when it comes to its theme. And, you know, it's, it's this huge uh, desert canyon and stuff. Please? Thanks. Really? And yeah, these darker areas seem to be a little bit more bright, brighter when you play uh, Duke Nukem Toe Meltdown, so you can almost see all of those uh, hidden messages without... Uh... And yeah. The cliffs go. Yeah, that's cool. And also, I think for visual reasons, uh, they probably... Well, actually, they did that in the uh, on PC, too. So they kind of like, um, you know, put the ex explosions that are being caused by that same sequence. They kind of like put the explosives outside the map. Mr. Assault Trooper, I'm still waiting for you. <laughs> oh well, that's one way of doing it. Not the most efficient way, but certainly a way of doing it. But anyway, they put the explosives outside the map, probably for visual purposes, but at least they do provide the audio, so they kind of like give, give you a little bit of a sense of, you know, the city exploding and stuff. City. For some reason, I was thinking of this uh, one user map that was made by Merlin Van Ostrom, where you have this uh, city going off in a huge quake. So this was not a city; this was a cliff. <sighs> or yeah, to be honest, I don't even know. <laughs> That's so so uh, so confusing. But anyway, the user map was made by Merlin Van Oster. He's one of the best mappers, do 3D mappers. So, yeah. But I'm not trying to go into any more detail about that because I totally failed to put it right to begin with. And that's the first secret. Well, they probably do, Duke. <sighs> I hate when they do that. Waste of ammo. Alright, but here we do have a little bit of a double secret. Let's make sure I have both of them. Yeah. Uh, this, I believe, does not count as a secret. But then we go inside this weird little temple, or whatever thing. Raise the stairs. Go over here and watch those cliffs go. Well, at least they decided to include some explosives in that case. Then you press that one, so that will be raised. And then you can press that one to activate the shrinker thing, but I'm not going to do that. I, I never do that, really. And I think... Oh, never mind. I thought there was an atomic health, but... No need for that, and here we have a chain gun if you need it. Let's grab the boots. 
Yeah, for some reason I'm just kind of always a little bit low on shotgun when I come to this area. I, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just that my ammo preferences are a little bit questionable, maybe. Because... Do you guys have to do that? Stay on the ground so I can kick you so I can save ammo, thanks. Alright. Let's gather all these octobrains together and not fall off like I did. Yay, backtracking at its finest. And now all those enemies, they're probably wandering out there somewhere. I hope that they're not too far away at least. And one thing also, what I noticed about Nuke Nukem Total Meltdown is that they actually decided to stick with the TC for maximum authenticity. So what they did was that, uh, because some of the enemies, they kind of like... Uh, on PC, they like wandering around. Hmm. And that's SUIT, which, uh, by the way, stands for Show Us Your Tits. And that is uh, Richard uh, Level Richard Levelord Gray's uh, standard message that he leaves in all of his maps. You can find that message from all of his maps. And when you open up, when you open them up inside Mapster, and we're not supposed to be here, I guess. And I believe that this was probably uh, using a different font when uh, <clears throat> when uh, uh, you would be playing on PlayStation. I believe I might be mistaken, but I don't remember seeing that font on PC. On PlayStation, that is. Oh god. But anyway, one other thing that I was uh, supposed to be talking about was the uh, fact that these enemies, they kind of like fall, fall asleep uh, shortly after wandering around. And that was also one of the things that was kind of like happening with the original PS1 game. So I can only speculate what was the reason for that. So probably the most common and likely explanation is that they probably could have done it for like performance reasons and stuff. So they just don't make the game lag too much and stuff because the lag was already an issue with Duke Nukem Total Meltdown. So and I think there's a one one assault trooper out there somewhere if he. Can I see him? Because I'm pretty sure that there should be one assault trooper down there somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Thanks. And if you jump uh, to the stairs from there in a wrong angle, you can get squished. Random little fact. Yeah, tell me about it, dude. Oh jeez, I missed the secret. Oh god. Whatever that secret is. Oh jeez. I need to go back and find that secret because by this time I believe I should have all the secrets. Oh jeez. I don't know what that secret is. I can't think of any secrets. Jeez. It could be that uh, either of these secrets, I believe, or, or at least I hope so, because I don't, to be honest, want to backtrack all the way to the beginning of the map or anything, because, oh well, actually you can do it with this way, so maybe it was this secret. No, because the secret is tagged uh, around this sector or so. Was it this one, maybe? No? Oh, actually it was. So that was the last secret. For, that seems to be a little bit difficult to tag sometimes, and you know, it's not actually the first time that I was uh, not able to tag it on my first go. <sighs> but with all of the secrets out of the way, 
we can finally proceed to fight the battle lord but obviously we still need to get to him so there are a couple of, enem couple of enemies remaining in this one mostly octobrains so this will take you inside the alien spacecraft so one last opportunity to use pipe bombs so why not to use them pipe bombs rock Okay, and to not take any fall damage, I decided to use that jetpack, so... And do a little bit of a circle around this area, and then you can open up these two, and once you walk inside these little closets, uh, these will be... Uh, these sectors will be raised, so you can get these, if you don't have a jetpack, that is. And then, let's get in. The battle wall. Let's see how ugly he is. Yeah, he's a little bit pixelated guy, and and I don't know if this is true, but his chain gun seems to be doing a lot of damage in this version. And also uh, because of the little bit of a questionable code uh, in the original game, I believe, Every time you shoot an RPG, he kind of like warps towards you like that. So that can lead to a little bit of an unexpected situations. Just like that. Just don't shoot him when he does that. So just wait for him to... You know... And Jesus Christ. So this is, this is definitely much more difficult than the PC version fight against him because he because of, he likes warping around like that for example like enemies like assault commander do that same thing out of the normal enemies and also um, you're about to find find out that you know the mini battle lords they look exactly like this guy right here and they're as big as this guy right here so but with that we're all done so let's go and watch the cutscene yeah and the game probably does that yeah it why on earth it does that it's it's just so stupid why I was not even pressing anything. But in any case, uh, that cutscene, unfortunately, I was kind of like hoping that I could leave the intermission screen there, but the game, for some reason, it just does that. I, I don't know why it does that. Just stupid. Because in Doom, it's like when you enter the next map, you have to press E, but in Duke Creedy, it's, it's not possible. But in any case, that's the first episode and the Battle Lord. So the Battle Lord fight is a little bit different here on PlayStation because he likes warping around, warping towards you every time you shoot an RPG. So if you sh if you shoot too many times, if you hit him too many times and you circle strafe around, it usually leads to the situation where he's just being so close to you and when a battle lord is being close to you, uh, his behavior is uh, scripted in such a way that when he is almost at a point blank range, he will start firing his chain gun. And we all know what happens when a battle lord uh, activates his chain gun and you know turns you into a Swiss cheese from point blank range. So that makes it very difficult not to mention that um, I don't know is it like you know his shots are may maybe making a little bit more damage or is it like uh, or is it like uh, that his shots are more accurate or something I, I don't know but it seems that he is way more painful uh, to deal with on PlayStation than he is on PC. Of course, you know, on PC, out of all bosses, I think Battle Lord is obviously the most painful one because he's a hit scanner. So, 
but in the following episodes we're going to be meeting mini battle lords and we're gonna be seeing how big they are and how quote nicely quote they will you know move around the maps <laughs> first of them i believe appears on episode two level three <clears throat> but with that i think we're all done with the first episode i was kind of hoping that i could talk about a little bit more about a cutscene um, which is a little bit more uh, high def than it is on pc where you know duke gives this line i am like I'm Duke Nukem, I'm going to get the rest of you alien bastards, and then he kills the Battle Lord. Here on PlayStation, Duke does not say a damn thing. He just, you know, he's just being merciless, uh, you know, like a Doom guy. He just gets the job done, so <laughs> he's not saying anything. But also, I think Duke uh, looks a little bit questionable, I think, uh, in the cut scene, he he looks like a little bit skinny, and you know, I was kind of like maybe maybe saying that uh, in the first video that I made about this mod. So yeah, Duke is maybe a little bit foolish looking uh, in this one, but I think in some of the later cut scenes he looks much better. I think, but with that. Uh, we're all done with the first episode so the next time so next time we will see you in the second episode of Lunar Apocalypse uh, when we will be playing Duke Nukem Total Meltdown TC so I hope you have enjoyed this so yeah thanks for watching and see you around